Welcome to Bedford Square. And you'd be forgiven for thinking, hang on a second, he's gone outside London. They've gone elsewhere. We haven't. We are literally two minutes walk away from Tottenham Court Road and also from Oxford Street. Join us as we go for a walk around this historic square. Bedford Square was built between 1775 and 1783 as an upper middle class residential area. The square takes its name from the main title of the Russell family, the Dukes of Bedford, who owned much of the land in his what now known as Bloomsbury. Bedford Square is now thought to be one of the best preserved set pieces of Georgian architecture in London, but most of the houses have been converted into offices. Many of them are Grade 1 listed buildings. With the trees overhanging the pedestrian area of the square, this really is a beautiful place to come during the summer because of the shade it throws across. It's also worth remembering that you can't come in here. It's a private garden there for key holders only. The square is situated between Tottenham Court Road on one side and Gower Street on the other side, two main roads in London taking the traffic either into central London or out of central London. Although, judging by this video, it's hard to believe this is in central London and so close to Oxford Street as well. With the street lights and architecture and just the way the whole street is set, you'd be forgiven for thinking we just walked onto the set of another period drama set in central London. One thing I love about London is blue plaque spotting. So here's the first one of this video today. And this is where Sir Henry Ricardo lived. Now he was an English engineer and was one of the foremost engine designers and researchers in the early years of the development in the internal combustion engine. Yes, the car. Now the area that we're in is also known as Bloomsbury, which is an area funnily enough later developed by the Duke of Bedford, yes the same one as Bedford Square, back in the 19th century. Prior to that the Earls of Southampton in the 17th century had started to develop it. The whole area of Bloomsbury, which is quite large, was originally built as a Regency area residential area by the developer James Burton. Not only has it got the British Museum and University College London, but also it's got other garden squares, including Bloomsbury Square and also Russell Square. We're looking at number one Bedford Square, which actually is in Gower Street, almost opposite Bedford Square, but it's always been included as part and parcel of it. With houses two and three, it was threatened to be demolished back in 1860 when they were building the British Museum, but thankfully other plans were made. Another great thing about Bedford Square is the number of benches they put around so you can just come and sit here and watch the world go by. Now the whole square has this beautiful big garden in the middle and the central garden remains private but it's open to the public as part of the Open Garden Squares weekend. The square is Grade 2 listed on the Register of Historic Parks and Gardens. London is not immediately thought of being really green, but if you get some of these high up places where you can get a great view across London, and actually I'll put a link to some of the videos up in the top right hand corner, you won't believe how green London actually is. Yes, have you spotted it across the streets? It's time for another blue plaque. And remember what I always say, you've got to look up in London to really see the fun and the details. So here we go. So this is where Ram Muhan Roy lived, and he was a reformer. Now, his influence was really apparent in the fields of politics, public administration, education and religion. And Roy is considered to be the father of Bengal Renaissance by many historians. Here we're at 47 Bedford Square, and this was the site where the Bedford College for Women was founded back in 1849. Elizabeth Jessa Reed believed in the need to improve education for women, so she leased this house and opened the Ladies' College in Bedford Square. For those watching that love their booksellers, you're going to love this. This is Mag's Brothers Limited, and it's one of the longest establishment antiquarian booksellers in the world, established in 1853. And did you also see the royal seal of approval? 
You'll see on the road there that there's a space for diplomatic. Yes, some of these places are also embassies, which you quite often find in these sort of rural squares around central London. The trees that border the garden within the middle of Bedford Square do a great job at keeping great privacy on the square and those inside it. But as you can see here, there are different places where you can look into and see what's actually there in the middle of the square. And you can sort of dream of being in there. Unless, of course, it's one of those open days. With its red door, that's probably got to be one of the most standout doors in the whole of Bedford Square. Really hope you're enjoying this video, and if you are, do us a favor, will you give us a thumbs up so we can spread this video around YouTube to help others love London as well. Right, I think I need to get a blue plaque siren, but anyway, here we go. Here's another one here on Bedford Square, and this is for the British novelist Anthony Hope. Now, Sir Anthony Hope Hawkins, who was better known as Anthony Hope, was a British novelist and playwright. He was a prolific writer, especially of adventure novels, and he's probably most remembered for predominantly for only two books. One was The Prisoner of Zender, and the other Rupert of Hensow, both from the late 1800s. There's almost something quite striking about all the different street lighting around London and it almost feels like when we're going to different places no street lighting is the same but when you look at this and the style that you've got with the trees behind it it provides a beautiful backdrop. There are so many amazing great places to come and see in London and the best way to do it is probably on foot and have a good walk around and I've put a playlist for that up in the top right hand corner to give you some other great places to see in London. Always a good testament that you're in London, building works are going on. So yes, here near the end of our trip round Bedford Square, we have scaffolding up for buildings being renovated. Now, if you love areas and scenes like this, have we got a beautiful walk that we did around Mayfair. And I've put a link to that video up in the top right hand corner. So if you click on that, I'll see you in there.